In the last few decades, the power of telescopes has advanced almost exponentially. We went from being able to see some stars in some frequencies, to now pretty much seeing the entire universe in pretty much all frequencies. But more importantly, automation and artificial intelligence now allows astronomers to scan huge parts of the night sky and discover any changes or discover any anomalies pretty much right away. And one of the more intriguing projects that we've discussed previously, that's mostly focused on the Milky Way's bulge and basically our own galaxy, is known as VVV, Vista Variables in the Via Lactea. It's been going on for almost 14 years now, and it's mostly focused on changes, changes in star brightness or something else changing in a star, in order to then help us understand something we've never known about before or potentially discover some hidden mysteries. And intriguingly, we've discussed this particular survey before because in the last few years, it did actually discover a lot of missing stars. There's actually over a thousand now, but basically these were stars that were visible back in the 50s in the 60s and are not visible today. Now, you can learn more about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but in a nutshell, it's unclear exactly what happened to those stars and if we've just discovered some kind of a new unusual phenomenon. But discovering a new phenomenon should not really come as a surprise, because these new telescopes have been doing just that for the past few decades. New unusual phenomena, new unusual discoveries, and new unusual stars. And now the scientists have discovered another unusual star we've never known about until now. It does not have a really cool name yet, but their nickname for now is Old Smokers. Ancient stars that turn out to be very unusual compared to anything else. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of these new discoveries from the Triple V survey, find out exactly what these stars probably are, and also discuss some of the other mysteries discovered in these studies. And mostly because a lot of these discoveries can potentially finally explain why some stars seem to have vanished, as you can see from this image, and as you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. Because the phenomena discovered in this particular study could maybe explain some things. And so, here's what we know so far. When it comes to the survey, it's mostly focused on this part. And it essentially tries to focus on specific areas in order to identify long-time changes. And though the main goal for the survey itself is just to find different types of variable stars, mostly because quite a lot of them are usually used in, for example, distance measurements, in this case, these particular studies only wanted to focus on young stars. And here we're talking about really young stars. Stars that are not even stars yet. Basically, stellar precursors, or sometimes known as YSO, young stellar object. The central objects that will become stars, but are still growing quite dramatically, and usually changing in luminosity by huge margins. For example, here is a snapshot of a light curve for a very famous such star known as Fu Orionis. You can learn more about this star in one of the videos in the description, but as you can see here, even in a single year, it changes quite dramatically, and it's actually difficult to predict how exactly it's going to change or by how much. As a matter of fact, if you look closely, you'll notice that around 1935, it suddenly started to dramatically increase in brightness, but in the last few decades, slowly dropped in brightness and is continuing to do so right now as well. Now, because in this case, the scientists are basically trying to study these young stars and are trying to understand them a little bit more, discovering even more of these objects out there is, of course, the main way we can do this. And it's surveys like this that easily allow the scientists to discover them. Here's actually another interesting image of similar objects, in this case taken by the James Webb, and this is in the Orion Nebula. Because Orion Nebula is basically a molecular cloud where a lot of baby stars are forming right now, quite a lot have been discovered by looking at various frequencies of light. But because they don't produce a lot of optical light and a lot of infrared light, usually infrared telescopes are the best to try to find them. But one of the studies here was basically trying to find how these young stars transform into actual stars, when basically the fusion starts and the hydrogen starts burning. And here they did actually discover at least 32 such stars. This is just a new discovery, so we don't actually have any details yet, but one of the studies in the description discusses this in a lot more detail. But all in all, approximately 200 different variable stars were discovered by the researchers using this new data. And essentially here we had 200 objects that at some point changed their brightness. Some by just a little bit, some by as much as 300 times. 
with many of them changing the brightness for just a few months, many of them for a few years. And so most of these were very likely these newborn stars that the researchers nicknamed squalling newborns. Or basically newborn stars that had a lot of different emissions and would have a lot of outbursts pretty much every year. But there was some really intriguing additional discoveries that nobody expected. But first, what was expected? Well, apart from these newborn stars, the researchers were also expecting to find typical variable stars, like the one right here, that will usually produce periodic changes in brightness. Naturally, quite a few were found as well. Apart from that, typical variables also include things like NOVA, very powerful explosions around a white dwarf binary, where the white dwarf basically steals a lot of matter from its partner, with that matter exploding on the surface in the process. And the other interesting phenomenon scientists are interested in is what's known as microlensing, essentially a passage of some kind of a massive object in front of a star that does increase the brightness for some time, but very often only once. So this is not something that's going to repeat again, but something that allows us to study these objects and even determine their mass and their size extremely precisely. But of all of these variable discoveries, 21 did not fit into any of these categories. They were somewhat unusual, yet seemed to be pretty much everywhere. These were very large red giant stars that would dramatically change their brightness for different periods of time. Even more dramatic than Betelgeuse and a lot of other red giants we've discussed recently in one of the videos in the description. And all of them seem to be very old giant stars. Basically stars that are either going to go supernova or potentially transform into something else, such as a planetary nebula, in the future. But surprisingly, most of them seem to be in the same region of the nuclear disk. Or basically very very close to the central bulge of the galaxy that does contain slightly different molecular composition. And further analysis established that these dips are not because of some kind of a planetary disk or because of some kind of a planet around them. They all seem to last for at least a year, often longer, and because of the way the stars dimmed, it was all very likely due to some kind of a small dust. In other words, just like with Betelgeuse, they seem to have this huge dust cloud that seemed to block the light from our perspective right here on planet Earth. But unlike Betelgeuse, there was no pre-existing large mass of dust, suggesting that this dust was actually being created by the stars through some kind of a process. Which is why they were kind of nicknamed Old Smokers. Old stars producing a lot of smoke. And though at first it was not clear what's happening here, further investigations established that all of these stars were extremely high in metallicity. Or basically they contain a lot of non-hydrogen and non-helium elements, even higher than our sun. And this resulted in a higher production of dust, literally making these stars something we've never seen before. Humongous red stars that basically have smoke coming out of every direction. And that smoke changes their brightness by quite a lot. And so because the center of the Milky Way is quite enriched in a lot of heavy elements, this is probably why these types of stars seem to only exist here. But only 21 so far have been discovered, so we don't really know if this is a common phenomenon. Nevertheless, this presents us with a completely new way a lot of elements, especially heavy elements, seem to be released into the Milky Way by the stars themselves. Not through supernova or through some kind of a major explosion, just through this unusual smoking process. And that of course means that regions of the galaxy with even more metallicity, or possibly other galaxies that are even richer in metallicity compared to the Milky Way, may have a lot more of these stars and thus have very different elemental composition or different types of star evolution compared to what we have here. And so definitely quite an intriguing discovery of a star or a type of a star we've never seen before or never knew existed until now. And I guess even more interestingly, even though the study mostly focused on these young stars, in terms of pure numbers, it actually did find more nova than anything else. And at the same time discovered these unusual old smokers. But because the survey is still going on and there's going to be even more data later on, chances are even more mysteries will be uncovered in the next few years. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.